Welcome to Seriously Speaking. Oftentimes, for those who have passion and pursue their passion, there's a thin line between doing what you love and earning an income out of it. And there's a thin line between helping as many people as you want, you know, because once you go public that I do X, Y, Z, a lot of people are going to besiege you. I have three such people who work in NGOs, treating issues that are so deep, issues like cancer and depression, mental health. Now, these three people are going to be talking about their NGOs and how even you can start your own and seek support, plus the challenges that go on. But at the end of the day, like we've been speaking in the past few weeks, collaborations between government and non-governmental sectors are key to moving our nation forward. I'll be back on Seriously Speaking if you don't go away. Welcome back. My first guest on the show runs a foundation that, that I mean, helps children living with cancer. It's called CLWCF. Her name is Dr. Neka Mobi. I met her hmm, maybe 10 years ago. I'm not sure how many years, but I don't see her every year. And she's also a subscriber to Today's Woman. It's nice to have you on Seriously Speaking. Yeah, thank you very it's much. It's nice to be on TV with you, right? Oh, really, really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because your work, your, your life's work. Now, you're a medical doctor, you're a pediatrician by training, but you've run this for 14 years. How did the first one start? Well, the first year was actually very, uh, how do I say, very scanty. I met a boy, he was two years, nine months. He had leukemia. And leukemia is what? Cancer of the white blood cells. And the father wasn't even agreeable to that diagnosis. He rejected it in Jesus' name. He was very upset that I, I should even begin to talk about that. And subsequently after that, I and the child became very, very tight friends, you know. And um, he had his third birthday in the world. And um, we had a small party for him. So that was actually how he started. Mm -hmm. I got money from some people and then we had a small party for him. Well, did he stay long in the ward? He had to, because they had to do the, the investigation to diagnose him, you know, from the time he came in, from the, to the time he was um, given the first course of chemotherapy. Subsequently, he was discharged and he went home. And he didn't come back until the day before he passed on. Oh, wow. Yeah, he didn't come back because the parents had spent everything they had during that first visit and had other needs. That were more pressing. That were more pressing. House rent, transportation, feeding, clothing for them themselves and their other children. And of course, they went to the church after that first admission. So by the second visit, I was called that they were in the emergency room. I went there, saw him, went back to my work. By the time I came back, the next morning he had passed on. And that was actually what started this charity. Cool idea of doing this charity. But then I'm sure you didn't set up a proper NGO. You didn't have, what has the growth been like? No, I, I, did, I did set it up. You know, that, that first child, what, what I did at that first time was to talk to about you know, a few friends. This is my challenge. I cannot just begin to imagine my own children having such an ailment and nobody to help. I, because I actually went, went online to find out if there are charities that support such in Nigeria. Everybody was doing breast cancer, breast cancer survival really. cancer. Nobody thought about Breast children. cancer mostly then, mm -hmm. you know. Nobody was, was talking about children. So as I said to them that we need to do something for these children, not, for, not just for this child, but for other children, because they were quite a lot in the world. So has, what has the growth been like? You've done this, you do walks, you do all kinds of things. In fact, in October, you tried to raise September. awareness by asking all of us to blow up yellow... Yeah, yellow balloons. Yellow balloons, uh-huh. Yeah, it's been quite, it's been growing, you know, because at least now, most times when some, I, I meet some people say, okay, I, I see you on TV, I see you in the papers, and you're always talking about childhood cancer. So is the media has been quite supportive. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it real? Mm -hmm. I said, yes, it's real. And we'll have children who are our faces, you know, have, you know, some of the survivors mm -hmm. doing things for us, or have people who actually... How old is your oldest survivor? Um, they are both 17, actually. Oh. They were seven, seven. How old were they when they had the... Twelve. Oh, so five years have lived with it. Was yes. it been completely eliminated? What kind of cancer did they have? One of them had cancer of the bone, osteosarcoma, and hopefully this is the fifth year now. So, so I want to the believe, question mark. Yes. But the other child, unfortunately, got another or a second cancer 
down the line, mm -hmm. for that was last year, December, a year, mm -hmm. almost a year ago, he had, um, he ha he had Hodgkin's lymphoma, and at, at the end of the day, he got leukemia. So, I mean, are cancers in children deadly? Enough for parents to raise their hands and say, I don't want to try. No, it is not. It's only here in Nigeria because of the late presentation, the lack of um, treatment plan and things like that, that actually make it look as if it's a death sentence. Abroad, we have up to 80 to 90% cure rates, while we have less than 20% here in Lagos. Wow. So you can see that the difference no, that, is quite clear. You are telling me just for Lagos. You don't have statistics for the rest of Nigeria? It's more or less children. the same thing. Right. But I mean, I'm talking about Lagos where, where I practice. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's more or less the same thing, mm -hmm. if not less than that 20%. 20, that 20 no, but do you feel a sense of helplessness? In, initially. Now, um, I think we are gaining grounds. We are part of Nigeria Cancer Society. We have doctors who are willing, who are... To looking, give up their yes, time. To yes, support. their time, their money, their everything. I have one such doctor in the house. Though she never mm -hmm. met you until now. So, Dr. Dr. Joe, I call her Dr. Joe. Please walk on set before I take my break. Okay, let me take a break. Let me take a break so I don't, you know, I'll take a break. You keep wondering who Dr. Joe is. We'll be right back. <laughs> yes, welcome back. I decided to bring Dr. Joe on set behind the camera so you don't see her cat walk with her nice curves. However, if Dr. Joseph, she's Dr. Daya Joseph. Yes, I Thanks for joining Joseph. us. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me. But I prefer me. to call you Dr. Joe. It's more funky. It's okay. <laughs> I don't see you like one doctor that I can't reach. You know what I mean? I met her in the oncology right. department in Luth. Yes. I mean, but then it was for breast cancer. I didn't know she was doing children living with cancer. Now, if you, you your foundation is called Dorcas Cancer Foundation, Dorcas Cancer, and your focus is on children. Yes. Now, if but you had heard about CL CLWCF. Yes. But it didn't stop you from starting your own. No, it didn't. Why? Um, because I hadn't met her. In yes. fact, at the time, I had the impression that she was in Abuja <laughs> for some reason. Yes. You see what I mean? So, I had the impression she was in Abuja, so I, I didn't even know that she was operating out of Lagos. It means and, the problem is massive. Yes. And um, what it was for me was I, I kept feeling guilty. I mean, it was on my mind for a very long time. What's your own, what's your own field? Oncology, clinical and radiation oncology. Means you're the ones that give people chemotherapy and things like yes, that. Yes, and radiation therapy. Mm -hmm. And I did meet a few of these kids. In fact, I met Dockers. Dockers was a patient that I met. She was oh, wow. 13 when she passed on, but she was 9 or 8 or so when I met her. And I found that I was feeling... What kind of cancer did she have? She had osteosarcoma, cancer of the bone. Is that one something you can survive from? Absolutely. Most, most children's cancers have fantastic prognosis if they're properly treated and detected on time. And what I find with children and what bothered me the most was the fact that the parents had done the right thing. Their daughter was ill and she, they are taking her to see a doctor. Regular. You know, but then they had treated her for malaria and typhoid and infection and everything else for months at a time before finding for what the real so yes, how do they the real know? diagnosis is. So yeah, so one of the things we're trying to do, one of our awareness campaigns is called Look Again. We're just trying to launch it now where we want healthcare professionals to have a high index of suspicion for these things and don't keep treating the same child for six months for the same thing. You need to find out what else is wrong. What what's else is what's going wrong on? with that? If symptoms persist after two days, consult your doctor. So maybe <laughs> what was it? If symptoms have persist, consult opinion. another doctor. Mm, have a second opinion. You know, a third opinion. Patients in Nigeria are always afraid to ask their doctors for a referral. I don't know if you've experienced that. Always, in fact, sometimes patients come well, away with medication. Some, some doctor won't even tell you what they're giving you. Yes, they come away with medication and they don't know the name of the medication they've been given. They, they're afraid to ask for a second opinion. They're afraid to ask to be to ask to be referred to a specialist. You know, and so those are the things I want to educate people about. Like, listen, I've come here three times now. My child hasn't gotten better. I want to see a professional. I want to see a specialist. You know, I want you to but refer But do you need me. their permission to see a specialist? Yes, but no, you know, because, they, because you don't need to give you a referral letter. Yes, and then you have to know where to go. You can't go looking for a specialist and end up in the, in the arms of someone who is going to be more dangerous for you. So you actually have to go to the right place. And it's up to the doctor that they are in contact with to refer them to that place. And it's also the doctor to look for what is wrong, to look again at what is so wrong. So are you focusing on raising awareness amongst health professionals, or are you trying to support children living who have cancer? We are supporting. I mean, so far we've had, we've treated over 10 children with cancer, and we have, I mean, we have seven at whose or cost? eight. We have partners and kind donors that help us, you mm -hmm. know, and we've been able to successfully, we have survivors that we can 
you know. Mm -hmm. But we also want to do a lot of awareness because at the end of the day, the major problem is delayed detection. And with children, it's different. Children get sick, they do fall sick. Their parents do the right thing, they take them to the hospital. It's up to the doctor to find what is wrong. So is that just, like just professional, professional jealousy or something like that? Or is it, is it ignorance or what? What do I, you think? I think it's ignorance. And then I, I think old school too, you know, because I remember my mother, she had, a, she had eye problem and I went to um, a clinic with her at Onicha. And telling the Indian doctor that I need to know what he's giving to my mother, they gave her medicines and thought of the names, names of, of the names of the yes, packages. and I'm like, what the heck is this? Please, I need to know what well, you're taking. giving to my mother. I'm a doctor, so I need to know what you're giving to her. And I, I want to know because if she reacts to those things, I know. So I will tell you, no, no, don't give her this, don't, don't give her that, give her that. And the man refused, you know. So it's, it's, I think is that isn't that for, because they don't want us to abuse the privilege of knowing. No, 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 that's, no, no, that's no. complete bollocks. It, because it, it, information, <laughs> you have the right to know to what know you're what putting you're, into your, your yes. body. If, if I give you food to eat on a plate and you don't know what the food is, you, would you eat it? it if I don't tell you what it is? You see something? So so is, that, is, that, is that danger not there though, especially when it comes to kids? No, that would have self self medicate. No, but, I then, but then if, if you're if you're well informed, if you're equipped with that you information, you want to know what next to do. You don't just because the child is having similar symptoms, you give. And then because of the, the, in, the age of internet nowadays, people actually go on, on online to find out what, 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 what. But then so it's safer it, telling them from the doctor. The truth is that abuse is less common when people are well educated. Yes. If the patient knows what you're giving and why you're giving, they're not going to abuse. Next they time comply. they know that, okay, it's something different this time around. So what do we use now? I must you thank know? you for now to go, because I want to go to postpartum depression. Okay. Let me get my next guest before we engage on the panel about how your challenges can be solved. I'll be right back on Studio. Thank you first for now. Thank I'll be right you. back on Studio Speaking. <laughs>